This meeting is being recorded. All right. Welcome to the College of Complexes. I'm Justin. I'm moderating tonight. Um, there are two rules, one full at a time, no personal attacks. So that means I can't call Charlie a boomer because he doesn't know how to operate Zoom. Who's um, Justin? So, um, Charlie, go away with go go with it with the announcements. Okay, well, please mute if you are not one of the speakers. Thank you for muting. Um, so, so uh, we're tonight. We're going to look at a look at the Green Party view of politics and the platform of the Green Party, a guide for all voters. Uh, we'll be joined by Anna and Charles from the Illinois Green Party. These actions are considered, quote, positive recommendations for progressive change. The principles and objectives of the party also embraces other forms of political activism, including support for various non-electoral movements the green party's got 10 key values you can visit their website lp uh excuse me ilgp.org and uh take it away green party folks yeah how do i do this full screen uh i think that you go to double click the Slide one, maybe. Is that not on the view? Or slideshow. Go to slideshow right by where you're just pointing at the top. Oh, okay. And then what? Uh, I don't know. Uh, click on slideshow. Let's we'll see what it does. <laughs> Yes, further up, further up. Keep going up, Charles. Ah! Where it says slideshow at the top, it says file, home, insert. There you go, slide. Wait, 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 wait. Go, keep, there. There it is, slideshow. Can you see it? Not sure, did you click on it? Or you can, you wanna just, Go to the, click on number two. I think you can do that and it would just go. Okay. Anna, good to see you again. Nice to see you. Charles, I, I, click on slideshow. Yeah, I did. Well, double, try double clicking. Go up, yeah. Double click on slideshow. See up at the top. Up at the top. Go clear to the top of the screen where it says slideshow. <laughs> ah, that's, okay. Okay, I'm at the top. Now what? All right, from the beginning. There, there you go. We go. All right, we all set then? Are we all set? Take it away, Charlie. All right, welcome again. Thank you for the waiting to our complications. It's good to see you here, Anna. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, I think there's some other greens here. Janiel, perhaps, and maybe some others will be joining us. Uh, we heard a presentation from the Libertarian Party on their platform. So I was inspired to give one on my own political affiliation, the Green Party of the United States, of the state of Illinois, and the Global Greens. Okay, uh, let's see the next one. Um, let's see. All right, uh, there you can see it's a we're an activist group. There's our hey, Charles, prize winning Charles, parade. Yeah. There's our prize winning parade flow. Uh, best banners you're ever going to see the, the marching unit. Uh, 
Okay. And there you can see either chapters participate uh, in fostering the organization. Those are groups from Southern Illinois um, uh, in parade fashion as well. Uh, this is indicative that as the oceans rise, so will we. The Green Party will rise. Uh, and okay, now uh, one of the things in general I want to say about the Green Party in general is that appeals to uh, those in the eco activist community, although that, though that is not the totality of our platform or positions, by no means. Uh, but we do welcome, it is, it is a topic of great concern to the young people, followers of AOC and so forth. And uh, we welcome the young people of the nation uh, and the state of Illinois, city of Chicago to participate in whatever reasons. We can see young people are very enthusiastic and you have almost no difficulty in persuading them in importance of the items covered in our platform. Now, this is what I am going to be discussing. Uh, very quickly, the 10 key values. We have a value structure. And also I see there is a, a very abridged four pillars of the GP USA. Next, we'll cover the platform. We'll just go through the outline uh, and follow that with a little more interesting things. Uh, the eco ratings of current elected officials in the state of Illinois. And then <laughs> at the end, an eclectic assortment of issues and activities of the Chicago Greens. <laughs> of which I hope you will become one, okay? Now, there you go, I'll give you a preview of coming attractions. That is the platform of the well thought out uh, Green Party of the state of Illinois. Um, about 20 sections, begins with a preamble, reiterates the 10 key values and concludes, uh, and then the subject matter is covered it ends with the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, much as we, our constitution incorporates a Bill of Rights. Okay, I, I, Justin somewhat was advanced of this, but I encourage you all to engage in autodidacticism, which is self-education and then without the guidance of matters. The materials that I'm presenting and that are always available online are a good basic background of many, many issues, both ecological and of a general movement nature. Uh, so they're a good place. I often like to look at them uh, from time to time to refresh myself, they're updated, but there is a good source of information. And I'm a librarian. And when I say it's a good source of information, it is one. Okay. Now, the Green Party structure, a little bit bureaucracy. The um, Green Party US uh, is a, was put together a few years ago in order to run a candidate for president of the United States. As such, there had to be a Green Party structure in each of the states, which we proceeded to do so. Before that, there had just been an assortment of uh, green organizations such as the Chicago Greens, which were not really uh, political parties as such to qualified to be running candidates or putting affidavits, uh, affidavits, not that um, uh, ballot issue initiatives. Anyhow, there's 150 seats on the national committee and uh, the proportion is based on your activity and achievements in advancing the party, okay? Uh, the higher level than that is the uh, Global Greens, and which is represented in 90 countries uh, and is the world's fastest growing political family. And they work for changes uh, within their respective countries. Uh, okay. Uh, now looking at the Illinois Green Party, I should say 
the Chicago Greens began when some gentlemen from Europe came, Germans, and told us they were Greens. So we put together a uh, Chicago chapter of just strictly environmental, people concerned about environmental issues. Other chapters soon arose. There was a Southside chapter very active in Chicago. Uh, there was a downstate chapter as well, um, generally given geographic names after the location. And later along came even a north side chapter and then a west side chapter. But these are environmental issues, which then met the requirements of affiliation uh, as a state party. So we put that together uh, and, that, and there are other chapters in existence uh, pardon me for not mentioning them all. Anyhow, the core of the organization, we developed these 10 key values to say these are the shared values of the Greens uh, across the state of Illinois and the nation. Uh, they've been around for many, many years, been revised from time to time. To a large extent, they're um, self-explanatory by virtue of the title. Uh, such things like ecological wisdom, I always liked that one. Respect for our diversity is a human rights. But anyhow, we had to diverge and expand the party from not strictly an environmental focus, uh, but to a more broader nationwide political party perspective. We still are, of course, uh, true to our cause and the primary focus. Why'd you have to do that, Charlie? Pardon me? You said you One had to do it. Time. Why'd you have to do it? We wanted to run a, uh, a candidate for president and become regular political parties. So we had to give it some bureaucratic organizational structure. Uh, much to their credit, that's what I mean. These are just nonprofit organizations scattered around the nation, which all came collectively together, much in socialistic fashion for the common good of the people of the United States. Does that explain it? Okay, let's go on. Okay, go ahead, Jim Key Values. I'm not gonna read any or all of this. You can always go back and look them over. <laughs> We're basically for grassroots democracy. We foster social justice and equal opportunity. As I stated earlier, uh, that the ecological William, that the earth sustains, I like to sustains all life processes. Uh, we foster nonviolence as a means of settling disputes. We also believe in decentralization to a certain extent that uh, local communities have some authority and a control. The basic model that's been used for years is act locally, uh, think globally, but act locally. Uh, another new one that's going somewhat under revision is community-based economics. We'll get into the Green New Deal versions that have come out on that. And eco-socialism. Uh, of course, the issue right now is feminism and gender equality, respect for diversity. Obviously, I like diversity by having as many people as possible from different backgrounds in our weekly collectives here. Okay, and of course, personal and global responsibility. So in terms of your own personal lifestyle, your own carbon footprint must be addressed as well as public policy of the nation and other countries together. And the future focus, of course. We're a party that focuses strongly on the future. We have a vision for basically progressive values. I should say it can be values. Um, it would be uh, interpreted as progressive in nature. Okay, all every four years, there's always an intriguing thing, which the libertarians can appreciate, but there's a scramble to get your scramble, but concerted efforts have to be done in each of the states 
to, in order to be recognized on the ballot. In some states, this is amazingly enough, simply paying a small fee. From what I understand, in other states, it is next to possible. Illinois is fairly difficult and in the requirement of signatures. There's, that's much needed aspect of reform. Um, we still are pretty onerously and controlled by the major parties that are acting to deny access to third parties. Okay, one thing that kind of singles out the Green Party as a political party is that we do not, none of the candidates nor any of its organizational affiliates accept corporate money. We are not in the tradition of this um, by buying elective officials like the guy Sarah and sign says, I can't afford my own politician. So I made this sign. That's what we're acting against. We try to take money out of politics by not allowing it to happen in the first place. So one of the advantages of voting for a green candidate is that you're voting for a real person who's not already bought and sold and owned by some corporate entity or maybe a polluter. Uh, or something like that. Okay, uh, among our current campaigns, I believe Tonale is still on there, uh, and maybe Mark, but we're running these candidates, Greens for the Water Reclamation District. They have meetings uh, twice a month, the campaign, doing a lot of good organizing efforts, and it looks like this they're going to win. I know they are. They're heading their hearts in the right place. Uh, very important here, water issues. Okay. Now, another thing, if you are interested uh, and contact me, and we'll see about making you a ward committeeman for the Illinois Green Party of Chicago. Uh, there's spots that may be open, um, but you can sign up uh, to serve in that capacity. Uh, one of the responsibilities are is to getting out the vote within your ward. I functioned for many, many years in as the ward committeeman of the 11th ward in Chicago. And for many years, we got more green votes than pretty much anybody else, except maybe some of the lefty north side. We're very, but for a standard Chicago neighborhood, very respectable turnout. Another thing you might be, if you get involved in, uh, this was an effort in the spring. Anna was spearheading this. You might even speak about it later, but getting initiatives on the ballot uh, for people <laughs> to express their sentiments um, on various issues. Um, I didn't really advance this, but hypothetically, I wrote one of my own. So this is Chuck's ballot initiative. <laughs> that we should only have electrical energy from clean power sources. I bet you this would have passed. I should have gone it, but the city has very different requirements on initiatives. Had I lived outside of the city, perhaps I would have pursued it. Okay, I mentioned earlier retreating back. I am not going to go into detail on this, but this is on the main website of the Green Party USA. Before, I like the detail in this. So you can go back later uh, and review it. And they have the four pillars, democracy. And you can see there are many, many issues that come under that, such as voting, human rights, women's rights, uh, DC statehood, a number of things, ranked choice voting. So these are one area of concern of the Green Party USA and the state. Another one is social justice. Because I'm very glad to see that this topic has grown over the years, much needed. We are not the champions of human rights as we would be inclined to believe. But especially, I see actions are being taken on behalf of indigenous peoples. We'll cover a few little bit on that. Anyhow, much needed reform. That's quite a lengthy one because it incorporates environmental justice. 
the global warming, if it takes effect, will affect different demographic groups differently, in particularly the young and the elderly, and uh, different portions of the world. Some ports are, are heating up. Well, actually, there are even portions of the world which are, might cool down. Uh, the Gulf Stream will not be warming possibly Europe in the future, and there may be a cooling in process. Anyhow, that's an important one. Uh, economic sustainability. I don't know if I need to go into this in detail. I think many of you are already are online with me in this regard. And last of all, economic justice, as I says, said, there's some much, much talk and development on transitioning. People don't realize these whole global warming effort is a real transition of how we live, how we work, and how we use the planet uh, for, in a sustainable fashion, which will require a change in the economic system. People don't realize this. Now we have an opportunity now to do it correctly. This is a good opportunity, and that's why I say it's a good time to join the Greens. That's about the platform itself, which I recommend you look at. Again, we are a voluntary association of individuals committed to these principles. Um, anyhow, and we also, this is important. Uh, we also embrace, as I said before, other forms of activism, including support for non-electoral movements to advance the interests of labor, human rights, peace, social justice. So we, we are encompassing more than simply ecological issues, which I say are our primary concern. There you can see the areas. Uh, you can visit each of these in turn. Uh, it's very uh, educational and well thought out positions on each of these, not as an explanation of the problem and the solution. And this is undergoing, we are, we are not locked ideologically either. Uh, don't get that notion. While the important is platform for, the, for, for common um, purpose, arriving at a common purpose, it does not achieve the level of theology or ideology or maniac, I would call it maniac politics where it has to be one way or another, or co one cookie cutter or one size fits all, or the solutions are not always given. Okay, another section there, healthcare, which uh, uh, everybody gets involved in, education, certainly an ongoing concern, or human rights, voter rights, of course, uh, on their workers' rights, civil liberties, reproductive rights, uh, state budget issues. Uh, so you get a state influence on this. And the document concludes with incorporating the features of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now on the 50th anniversary of this Universal Declaration, I sponsored here in Chicago an academic conference. So I'm particularly well-versed on this and uh, um, encourage its adoption um, as a, 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 the standard uh, of achievement of this common standard of achievement of all nations. I like that. I like the way that's phrased. Okay, now in addition to all that other stuff, the Green Party, IL, does issue, does make, it makes issue statements. So based on all that core values and what have you, uh, we'll issue an explanation on an issue, an ongoing issue, a current issue. So they translate this into actual things like that. So you can see there it supports the worker rights amendment. We're ahead of the game. Not much even talked about that yet. Uh, John Deere strike goes into many level. Uh, ranked choice voting, of course, has been around. And I'd like to point out a nuclear moratorium. Very important that we have that 
in the state of Illinois since we're over nuked. Uh, whoops. Okay. Okay. As, okay. There we go. Now, the other thing, uh, we're, the, the Green Party is a busy place. Um, but these people are really going to it. From time to time, the Green Party will indicate that it is stands in support of. So you can go over the list there of issues or uh, act, act, activist issues that are being pursued. So there's another indication and a good place to get some background information and on where we stand. There's no doubt where we stand on issues. You know us, we're transparent as can be. So if you like that, and if you agree, I don't totally agree 1000% with all of it, but I've not seen anything to cause me of any degree of concern uh, whatsoever. Okay, regarding uh, I just want to bring this one, like this is a, a social media post that was up there and say no to nukes. Everybody's got to say no to nukes. I don't, and it includes these thorium ones as well. But say no to nukes, and there you can see they wanted money to keep an operation. And we say, no, I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. Now, what is the one thing we all share in common, though, right now, and the issue that takes precedent over anything else is how we stand on climate change, which requires changing the way we do things. Every year right now, we are putting 50 billion tons of greenhouse gases, that CO2, nitric oxide, methane, and hydrochlorocarbons, F gases, into the atmosphere. Each of them has different degrees of staying power. Um, nitric oxides remain in the atmosphere for a century, something like 121 years, uh, whereas CO2, maybe about 10 years. Anyhow, 50 tons uh, of CO2 every year from the uh, planet, from the activities human activities on the planet. Okay, and then what is a ton of green, green, whoops, what is a ton of, there, now there, I wanted to explain, a lot of people don't understand, a ton of greenhouse gas is a cube measuring about 27 feet by 27 by 27. So um, that's one ton. Now we're doing 50, you know, times that, 50 tons, which equals a cube every year, 21 a cube, that much pollution we are putting into the atmosphere. And anybody who thinks global warming isn't happening as a result of that, I don't know what more evidence you need to think that you could deposit that amount of soot someplace without consequences is not a valuable position. Whoops, okay. All right, now one other thing, there's another thing, uh, this is, I would think this is the best approach when you talk about global warming. Yes, global warming really, a lot of people don't realize, covers five issues. All the discussion on what to do about climate change concerns one of these areas. And these are the five areas that actions must be taken, meaning the guidelines, practices, standards, rules have to be established. The first one is electricity. The second one is manufacturing. The third is agriculture and deforestation. The fourth is transportation. And the fifth is buildings and structures that we occupy, heating and cooling. 
Now you can see the percentages to which each of these areas of human activity contribute to climate change. That's been pretty standard. Um, and there you see it done explained graphically, how we plug in manufacturing, farming, deforestation, uh, green, uh, green building, technology, and transportation. Um, okay. One of the things I'd like to add in a little factoids here to bring you all up to date, you may not be aware of this, is that almost you know, the more the earth heats up, but almost the, that all that heat is being stored in the deep ocean. That's where it is. So a lot of people say, oh, well, the temperature, the air, and so forth. To really place to measure climate change and global warming is in the deep ocean. That's where, and that's not a good thing to happen. Water is amazing. I'm amazed myself to the extent that water will incorporate temperature for an extended period of time. I can see why it is used in heating a building. Water does retain the temperature for a good period of time. Okay, here's the other thing. Since 1880 and the real onset of the Industrial Revolution, uh, global temperatures, no dispute about this, have increased by 2.2 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not a good idea. It's not good. Another little thing I wanted to help a lot of people don't know this is that another thing you say, well, the days and temperature during the day. The night, it is the temperature at night, not the day you got to be looking at. If the temperature at night increases, then you've got something in progress. That's what I mean. Right now, the temperatures of the evenings. So there, in essence, will not be any relief from uh, increment in, in temperature. Okay, let's get to a whole new area. We're moving on real quickly. Let's all take a look, folks. And how did your lawmakers score on the environment? Let's see what these uh, folks did. Much to their credit, they've spoken at the College of President, but every year the IEC, Environmental Council of Illinois, puts out a scorecard. I love these scorecards. I think they're great. They're an effective tool to keep legis legislators accountable, and they do a very good job every year, the way these are put together, they see how you blow, let's say at 10 issues, and then you do it mathematically, right at a score. Uh, another one um, that's good nationwide, it's been around for many, many years, is the uh, election guide put out by the League of Conservation Voters. I used to buy this in hard copy when that was the only time available. Uh, for use in, in meeting with members of Congress. But they, that, this one has been around for a long, long time and a very accurate assessment. How do our guys and gals work from Illinois? Uh, Senator Durbin's not too bad. Uh, he's he's uh, in the last session and Tammy's pretty good too. So I don't think we have any real reason for complaining. Hazel, you might want to take a look and see how your congressman or, uh, is. I think it's worth um, so they can see. We're doing pretty good in Illinois, which is much to the credit to organizations like the Illinois Greens that were able to show this kind of concern for environmental issues. That doesn't happen by chance. It doesn't drop out of the sky. Another of these performance scorecards that I often look at, if you're concerned about extinction of species, a little different focus is that put out by the Defenders of Wildlife. And I was looking over their latest scorecard and the Illinois, the members of the Illinois Republican delegation didn't do too well, as you can see. They all got zero, zero. 
That's amazing. Okay, now a few years ago, of course, uh, AOC uh, and the Senator from Maryland introduced the Green New Deal, which is only one solution to many versions of what should be done regarding climate change. It's a very good one. There's some areas that I might not totally like, but basically it's a basically good guideline. Actually, she based it on the Green Party presidential candidate who in campaigning had came up with the original Green Deal, the Green New Deal, uh, Jill Stein. And then she used it again in 2016. You can see that she had it on her. Uh, so we didn't, unlike them, they were, they only introduced it afterwards. We, they, we incorporated the Green New Deal as the basis of our candidate, candidacy for the office of president, the central feature. There you can see in Chicago, uh, here actions, uh, by young people. This is a Sunrise Movement event. Okay, and there's there very quickly is the Green New Deal itself. Um, it covers six basic areas, clean air, landscape, urban issues. Uh, and the last part is putting a generation to work. As I told you, there's economic issues regarding this. If you really, Want to know about the Green New Deal? I gave a lecture on this. It's in the lecture library of the College of Complexes. It's like on January 5th, 2018. And I go through it in great detail. So you can look at it all over very carefully. Some of the most recent developments also regarding climate change is the nightmare of this Republican administration that we had to endure. And unlike, this is amazing, out of 200 countries uh, for COP21, that's the international agreement latest on, on global warming, Trump pulled out, wanted to have nothing to do with the Republicans, and Trump wanted to have nothing to do with it. Uh, we talk about rogue nations. The United States became the rogue nation regarding this. Okay, also regarding these international treaties, um, like the Paris Agreement, I'll, I'm gonna give you a little breakdown here. They basically incorporate two features. One is whether or not there should be a carbon border adjustment tax. So imports are based on the carbon emission, emissions resulting from production. That's one way discussed in the international treaties. So you got like, it would be much in essence, a tariff that you do not want products made in an unecological fashion in your market. The other thing that you often hear about is cap and trade, meaning there is a cap set on acceptable standards. If you go below it, you earn credits, if you if you go above it, you you uh, if you're under it, you earn credit. If you go above it, you lose it. So it's set it's by setting an international standard. Um, so you can choose between either one of those. Okay, regarding our nation itself politically, as I mentioned, we got one of one administration, and the current one is as antithesis regarding eco-policy, Build Back Better Act, uh, incorporates many features of clean energy and climate change initiatives. Uh, uh, okay, and there you can see I got a letter from the president acknowledging uh, uh, our support locally here. One of the concerns, um, that we are actually, we can, we can have these initiatives at the federal level, but when it comes down to it, that's what I mean, act locally, think globally, but act locally, is that uh, it is gonna require some lifestyle changes. 
to combat global warming. I mean, currently we're using 40 tons each of, of stuff, material goods, which is incredible for a standard of living. Um, okay. Another thing that's in the news right now, the Inflation Reduction Act um, also incorporates. And so the climate is the climate action plan. And we're talking about transformative investments. Again, I said the focus is on economics to a green economy. It's coming. Okay, there you can see, this is what we're doing right now. Many of you went out today to buy something. I didn't. And this is where it ends up in a landfill. Okay, some of the things we do as Koreans, we post on social media. Um, we got Labor Day coming up not too long. Um, but anyhow, as I mentioned, the green economy um, is beneficial, does not cost jobs. That's a misconception among some union officials that it costs jobs. Oh, I just wanted to bring this in. Um, being basically a transportation person, um, one of the things done to reduce congestion and emissions of automobile and truck uh, gases is uh, congestion pricing. And I like this one here. It, it caught my eye. This is done in London, but it's the, that means you have to pay so much to go into the center city. A lot of people don't realize that includes if you, as a passenger, ride public transit into center city because you're not free totally of not creating congestion. So that even if you take the subway, you will be assessed on how far you travel and where from. Okay, another aspect you may or may not be aware of is that there was movement out of the East Coast uh, in addition to parallel to the Green New Deal called the Earth Bill, which also had purported to have solutions based on a consensus process of solutions to global warming. Very interesting. Uh, it is still uh, in Congress, in committee. Um, there are monthly meetings regarding this. We were active, the Chicago Greens, in recruiting people. They were asking people to sponsor their congressional district. That's how they're organized. Uh, I believe this is an early one in the campaign. All those districts have been filled. As I mentioned, economic aspects. There's also, I belong to a group called the Eco Socialist. It's, an, um, it's now a nationwide group, it's actually comprised of a lot of people, and particularly Mr. Whitney, who was president at one time of the Illinois Green Party, is very active in this. And as a matter of fact, spoke at the college on it. So, Eco Socialism Network. Uh, and they call it a solidarity economy. And there you can see the case for eco-socialism. Another thing in the news, Dan Governor Pritzker, uh, not too long ago, but a while back signed the CJA, the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, so that we would see job creations and a transition of the, let's hope that Illinois is at the head of the uh, game when it comes to transitioning to the global economy. Now, this is the fun part. We're almost done. Hang in there. The issues and activities of the Chicago Greens. So you can see we have a, a lot of serious issues that we talk about. And we also have some fun from time to time. One of the things I spoke with, I did a presentation on the transport and disposal of nu nuclear waste. Who needs it? Who needs this nuke stuff? Look at this. Traveling to your your neighborhood, maybe. Okay, next one is, yeah, we're anti-nukes. Chernobyl is still cooking. Uh, the anniversary, April 26th, uh, was the date of the beginning of the incident. It's still cooking like a barbecue pit. A lot of people think it's done, encapsulated. We're never, we're not far from over with that one. 
Germany just pulled a plug on all its nukes. Okay, another thing to do, we series speakers. We've been doing this for many years. Is three or four speakers, generally three speakers, every around the celebration of the birthday. Okay, they're one of my favorite ones at the college. The lecture should recording should be there. Um, was on all about oil, and we had some well versed speakers on this. This is an excellent presentation. Another thing I was countering. Exxon Mobil runs these ads about how wonderful it is, and they're creating jobs for everybody. Well, that just actually was kind of hard to get their photos. They didn't make it easy, but they are, they give you some idea here that they're such a wonderful place to work. You don't get dirty or anything, I guess, in an oil refinery. That this is really hazardous to occupation, by the way. Another thing the Greens do every year around make a resolution is to go plastic free so that you're not like this guy drinking, drinking all this bus containers and throwing them in the garbage. Another thing, I, I haven't heard much about this, but Pepsi and Coke and so forth wanted to have every bottle back. And they were changing the, um, they call it PET process for making plastic bottles. Um, I'll wait and see how that develops. Another little thing there, they even develop, they don't want plastic straws. I see, I, I saw somebody showed up at the college with an, a steel straw one day. Another issue that this has been going on, we've had even programs on this at the college. The city of Chicago, I don't think really has much of a recycling program. They got a lot of blue bins, but hardly anybody uses them. Matter of fact, the people in my block, they gave me all their blue bins. They don't use them at all. So I got about four or five of them. Okay, uh, they also be on local issues, such as tree, the condition of trees, essential to an urban community and uh, processing of greenhouse gases, particularly CO2. So it's not a positive event. Uh, and there are areas where you the city really, city Chicago does pretty good at tree care. Um, other cities are a little more active on it, such as San Francisco. Uh, I told you I involved in transportation. This is this drew a lot of attention from the railroad community and community transportation community. Is that Metro actually um, was seeking designs to go zero for zero emissions. This also is thought of, of course, is not just trains, but buses as well. And by 2035, um, it, is, it is said that um, we could have buses that are totally emission free. This is a nice little treatment that I thought good for drainage instead of wastewater uh, going in there. By the way, something we got from Tammy Duckworth um, talking about our interest in rail investment. Uh, we're not totally anti-car, but we do celebrate Zero Emissions Day and World Car Free Day. There you go. That's your, I don't know. All right, another issue is agriculture. Certainly a central feature in Illinois. Factory farming, we have to be cautious that it doesn't make are state uninhabitable, such as in the Carolinas. Uh, Deforestation and this, the status of species. Um, Hairs are going to have to relate to this. Um, I talked about recently, uh, I believe that one's been recorded. That was kind of a fun one, basically. Uh, another thing is, I just wanted to say, um, we do seasonal work too, seasonal themes. Uh, the national wardrobe, on average, we throw away 68 pounds of clothing. Totally, and I don't think I own 68 pounds of clothing, <laughs> but some people dispose of that every year. Uh, one thing we run every year and have for 10 years is how to have an eco Christmas. Uh, Christmas is a particularly uh, 
energy intensive holiday. Uh, many of the lights use more energy than a small country in the United States. Okay, uh, one of the funds of the Green Party, we had an online party uh, and also the Greens were advocating recycling trees if you went to have a natural one. Well, another little thing we're advocating is go not toxic at home. People don't realize it, that your indoor air of where your apartment or home can be 10 times more polluted than what is outside. Um, okay, another oh, fun one. I love this one. The cicadas were taking over the city. So we were issuing a warning uh, to be cautious in, in leaving your home and make trips only when necessary due to the cicadas. Um, okay, another thing, oh, a lot of us action on this are uh, pipeline spills. People think pipelines don't, don't are run perfectly. Well, there's a few episodes, pictures of, of them when they didn't quite work so well, you can see there. Okay, uh, and meetings to fight the pipelines uh, been going on for a number of years. Uh, we always post messages on Earth Day. And uh, last year, not only did we post a happy Earth Day, but we, we also issued an Indian Earth Prayer, um, which was kind of nice. There's another thing, Indians trying to stop the pipelines. I think her feather and the power of the Great Spirit was much stronger than all those thugs. So they're acting for the polluters. Okay, another editorials we put out from time to time. This is one that the United States is nothing more than an oil company with an army. Uh, for many years, of course, many of you are aware that I personally was involved in the transportation of crude oil tank by tank cars. We had these bombs uh, going off in the absence of regulations. Um, uh, another thing, yeah, we're right, we are obviously a, a lakeside city, and most cities are adjacent to a body of water on Earth. Ninety-some percent of them are, but don't think things aren't going to affect Lake Michigan. And there you can see what we may be facing. A fun one, I always run, we like to run every winter, when, when there's a snowstorm is what makes the snow dirty. There is a way of ascertaining if the snow outside your house is clean or dirty. You take a cube of, cube of, a cube of it, melt it down and see what, what it contains. So there is a scientific method of arriving at whether or not the snow is clean or dirty. Uh, if it's gray, you know we're in trouble. Okay, uh, another little thing is, oh, actually this movement is growing right now uh, to turn your lives, lawns into butterfly and bee-friendly habitats. Um, the sunflower is the logo of the Green Party because it captures energy during the course of the day. It follows the sun. So it moves from left to right, east to west uh, to capture the sun. Coming up, if you like to be active, there's a, a, an event coming up September the 23rd, um, a day of action, die hard, a die in, um, will be coming up to end fossil fuel financing. On again, another advertisement for our upcoming program at the College of Complexes. Okay, and that's it. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, I have a question. All right. Uh, was there? Did any of the? Uh, I know there's some candidates in attendance. Did they? Were they going to do anything, Charlie? Or uh, well, did they? Yeah. Anything? Anybody want to speak from the that's affiliated with the Greens? Yeah. Anna. Can I, yeah. Can I have? A question? Anna, we'll Anna, your question late in a minute. Uh, Anna or Tanio? Anyone else? I don't see the whole list. Would you like to tell us why you're a green? <clears throat> Does uh, I'll go I'll go first, and maybe Tanil will go. Uh, Brent is on as well. Um, Ellen is on. 
Um, not sure. I think every. I think that's all the Green Party members here. I'll let you run this then. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to thank Charles for putting this together for the presentation. Um, I uh, came on board a few years ago, so I liked a little bit of the history that he had with the Chicago Greens. Um, I'm just going to say why I love the Green Party. Uh, and why I think it's important for us to get behind the Green Party. Um, it's because of the governance. It's a, to me, it provides the 10 key values, provides a, a way that, that we can have good governance. We can make sure that there's equality. We can make sure that the environment is put first. Um, we can make sure that there is grassroots democracy and above all else, we can make sure that there's no corporate contributions um, in our government. The, to me, that is a big thing. The more we have our, our, the corporate hold on our politics, the less, it, less power of the people that we have. And to me, this is a, with the Green Party, it's a way that we can ensure that there's a level playing field with all the people. And what I love about the Green Party as well is it's a very lateral uh, organization. So somebody who is new can come in and be passionate and take the reins and this is what I want to do and you get out what you put in it. Um, some people just like to uh, you know, put a, uh, an annual donation to be considered a member and that's, you know, that's good as well. We do um, like the participatory government, but we understand, you know, people's times and resources um, as well. Um, so I love how diverse um, the Greens are. We do get people from various different political backgrounds joining our groups. Um, like um, there are some people who are in like Republicans who come on board because their party, they want to do more environmental stuff and their party doesn't really necessarily do that as well. Um, so it is nice to be able to have a place where you have your seat at the table. You don't have to have a pecking order. This is, this is a good place to have, um, be heard, get your issues across, and everybody has the same 10 key values that they abide by. We're in 72 countries, so it's not just Illinois, it's not just US, but it's in 72 countries. So it's, the green movement is a big movement, even though you might not see it from your house because you're in Illinois that has one of the hardest election laws for third parties and independents. So even though you might not see it in your, out of your backyard, there's a whole global movement going on um, out there for the Green Party. Um, and um, another thing I wanted just to touch base is um, uh, with the 10 key values, um, we can, it's nice that it's, it's there for us to help guide our discussions, our issues, and always have that mission statement in front of us to help make our decisions. And we use the consensus based decision making process. So it's a little bit different than Robert's rules of order, but with the consensus decision making process, you have your discussions, you get your, your concerns out there, you can block a, a whole issue. Uh, based on your concerns. So you're not just put in the corner and just, oh, you're not important. You're important and your issue is, you know, your concerns are important. So it's nice to have a place where it, you can bring those discussions at. And we actually have a participatory uh, a way to discuss these issues, which sometimes we don't always get from other areas in our life. So um, I'm, I am, I, going to be a write-in candidate for the state house district 85 i try to collect my petitions uh, my democrat uh, opponent needed about 400 i needed 1500 i collected over 1350 which is shy of the goal so i'm just going to still march on and so uh try to do what i can to make sure that the voters that the voters have another option besides just a Democrat who, according to her public information, just it takes a lot of corporate money. So I want to make sure that we hold the line in District 85 and make sure that there is a choice out there for the people, for the power of the people to rise. 
Um, and um, I know that there's, uh, Tennille is also a candidate for the, um, she's a candidate for the um, WRD. Um, so I'm gonna let her go ahead, if she's there, I'm gonna let her say a few words. Um, but I just wanted to quickly point out, um, just uh, no offense to you, Charles, I, I love that presentation. I'm so glad that you did it. Um, but I just wanna point out that the scorecards, um, there, I think it's more of a Chicago Green thing than an ILGP thing. Um, and so is the Earth Bill. So, um, you know, the, we do like uh, to have our chapters be autonomous um, and that helps, you know, grow the discussions as well. So I do appreciate everything that Charles does. Um, I think he is an amazing person. Tennille, are you there? I am, I am still here. So hello to everybody. Um, thank you guys so much for being on. Hello to Charles and Anna, all the other Greens I don't know and all the non-Greens, hello. Um, just really quickly, I think the, the question that was on the floor is why did we choose to become a Green? And so for me, I say this, um, I look at Greens, I always tell people that the Greens are not, a, they're not, they're more than a political party. It's a lifestyle. Um, the average person is, it's like you don't have to work to try to figure out what our 10 core values are, because for the average person, you typically just naturally incorporate them in your daily life. Maybe not all 10 of them, but the average person cares about social justice. The average person cares about racial diversity, gender equity. The average person cares about nonviolence. So, I mean, like if nothing else, most people care about those issues. And then you kind of niche down a little bit more. Obviously, when you talk about decentralization or grassroots democracy, um, or, you know, like if you are that green person that loves environmentalism, then ecological wisdom and personal and global responsibility, future sustainability, those things will really kind of hit home with you. But even if you're not, quote unquote, quote, green, you will really love what we stand for. And so for me, um, prior to the greens, I was just more so that person who did my civic duty. And whenever, you know, voting time came around, I would simply vote whether I really knew the candidates. I was not a huge politician, so I didn't follow politics. Um, I still don't describe myself as a politician. I consider myself more of a public servant. I've been a public servant for over 20 plus years. I've been married for almost 22 uh, years, I'm a mother. So like serving is what I naturally do. And so just on different levels, right? So I, by trade, I am a, I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm an award-winning author. I'm a publisher. I'm a speaker. So all of these things just naturally come to me. And I remember when I was thinking about joining the party, Anna was saying, well, no, it's all about who you are and what you bring. You don't have to be this cookie cutter way. And so for me, that's another thing that really stood out because I am an outstanding person. I am one that doesn't necessarily just, not that I'm rebellious, but I like to be able to think of on my own and bring my own ideas to the table. That being said, I am not even officially two years into the Green Party, yet I am a candidate um, whose name will be on the November 8th ballot for Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. And that is not a testament to me. That is a testament to what it means to be green. So when I ran for this, admittedly starting out, um, I, I, I say it all the time, I was green to being green. I was green to politics, but there was something greater than myself. So somebody in the chat said something about, well, will, will there ever be um, a green in state or national politics? And I pray to God the answer is yes. Um, one of the reasons why you don't have greens in politics is because there are not a lot of people who will vote for us. We keep talking about how we need more than just a 
bodily, but most of the time people will not vote for that third party candidate. And so if we, as the people, as being a democracy, we have the power to vote, I believe that the power lies with us. If we can get people to vote for something other than blue and red, then yes, there will be something other than blue or red in office. And so again, I didn't come on here as a candidate, but if I'm here, I might as well say, if you feel like it <laughs> and come November 8th, if you want to vote for me, um, then feel free to do so. But if nothing, else, I definitely would encourage you to think about, take a strong, you know, like go to ilgp.org or gp.us and really look and see what the Greens are. And I'm also the chairwoman of the Cook County Green Party. So we have a lot of different facets, a lot of different layers, a lot of time have already been taken, so I don't want to take up much more. But that in a nutshell is why I decided to join the Green Party. Thank you guys so much for this platform. Are there any other Green Party candidates who wish to speak at this time? Tania, what office are you running? Uh, are you in? I am running for the commissioner of the Metropolitan. Are running for the commissioner. Oh, for water reclamation. Yes, ma'am. There's a two-year term and a six-year term. Mark Bittner is our six-year candidate. Okay. And then it's just myself. So on the ballot, it'll either be myself versus um, Elizabeth Joyce running for the Democratic Party. And this was that her question. All right. So we're going to go into questions now. Hold on one second, Justin. I think uh, Brent, did you, he's not a candidate, um, but he's a Green Party person. Did you want... Did you want to say anything, Brent? I'm a member of the Green Party. I'm actually out in the environment right now. Uh, and, you know, the reason why I like the Green Party is because I can vote for things that I actually would like to have happen in my future. Um, I don't have to make a choice of a lesser evil. And I can get out of the reactionary environment of the Democrats and the Republicans. Thanks. I could say All something. Right, I'm thanks, Brent. Uh, so we're going to move on to questions now. No, I'm uh, sorry, Justin. Uh, Ellen is also a Green Party member, and I think she might want to have something to say. Oh, here. sorry. Ellen, I did not know you were a Green Party member. Yeah, yeah, right. I, um, I joined in 2019 that summer because I had the chance to be on the ballot. They uh, had a unique opportunity in the, um, or 2020, uh, because of the pandemic. They um, all they had to do was appoint somebody to be on the ballot, and that to me was a great opportunity. Um, you know, I uh, agreed with all the values. Um, actually, it turned out that they uh, picked somebody else to actually be on the ballot, but I did do the time, and um, you know, those are my values. Uh, I I was very disappointed that they kind of overrode the initial me being on the ballot, but, uh, and I, you know, it did seem that there was a, um, there, a false impression that I was anti-Semitic because I, I emphasized the need to um, overcome corruption is really, I mean, to me, we just have to have good people that get into office that um, are gonna dare to challenge and speak out against the more reactionary right-wing forces that, have taken over, uh, you know, the the Democratic Party is basically uh, right wing in terms of war, you know, um, I, we're so divided, but it seems, you know, with the Trump election that there was so much uh, war. And uh, my concern really is that the, a lot of this, there's a lot of, you know, going back to 2004 and before that the, there's a lot of funny stuff going on with, you know, so it, with the, and a lot of it did come really from the England, Israel, these people that control Cambridge Analytica and, um, you know, the SEL elections that there's, you know, they're kind of sabotaged the honest whistleblowing, outspoken, honest, you know, um, candidates from getting online. Uh, so, um, you know, it's, 
right now, I guess I really am more independent than anything, but the main thing is, you know, I think we should get rid of all the parties and just have everybody be independent because they have to rep, I mean, those are my values. They should be everybody's values. You know, why don't we save the planet and not go to war? And, uh, but the, the other parties, and I don't know to the extent of this party or the libertarian, but it, uh, I think people end up voting. I, I'm a market research analyst you know, against Trump, you know, against the most fascist of all of them, you know, so, uh, right, and, um, but they, they've gone, and so we're kind of divided and conquered, but uh, I did speak with um, Rita uh, this year, I was going to go to the party, and, you know, I, I appreciated uh, Anna's, and, you know, all of y'all's, um, their interest, and, uh, you know, even though I, you know, was so hurt, they at least, not like getting kind of blackballed um but uh you know i i still we gotta we just all have to come together around solutions so uh i'm a you know who knows okay i think uh, they should have other... more even numbers of ballots that's just crazy yeah. we need a, a level playing field okay mm -hmm. is there any other uh green party people on the on the call that wish to speak before we move into questions going once going twice so we'll go with lana we'll have the first question raise your hand or uh you know put in the chat if you're interested in uh joining the queue for questions but go ahead lana okay thank you very much uh, for the opportunity charlie i have a question for you um since green party very natural uh, movement so my concern and my question for you maybe you can answer about really water uh, clean water because in our area water you know i don't want to i don't want to say nothing wrong but you know it's very very much need to be fixed because even if i come to the kitchen it's impossible sometimes come to the kitchen because it smell like more than chlorine. So uh, perhaps, uh, okay, my question is, I will very briefly about it. So how they can fix water smell and not put too much chlorine uh, to the water in our neighborhood because it's danger for the health. And people complain and we try to phone water reclamation and they did not respond really. Please, can you answer this question, how they can fix Yeah, all right, I will. Not uh, idiot. Thank you. The concern about water in Chicago is, is, is uh, lead uh, feed water. Uh, the water lines in my house, I live in an older home that remodeled my parents, and uh, the lines coming into the building are lead. Now, that doesn't mean it's particularly hazardous. There are ways of set, assessing this. If you're concerned, I can send you information regarding it. You are not correct, however, that our, our overchlorinated water in Chicago, by far, by no means, Chicago water actually is determined to be very good. We happen to live on one of the largest bodies of fresh, clean water on Earth. But maybe it the that, Maybe yeah, yeah, one full at a time, please. please. Yeah, from neighborhood, maybe it depends. One full at a time. Thank you. There's one water system for the city. Actually, I assure you, I have seen and lived in areas where there is really chlorinated water and it comes out like milk. And I'm not, it comes out white and you can actually take a glass. What people would do is take a glass of water and let it settle. So by no means is the water uh, here chlorinated to any extent beyond, I would say, a matter of fact, <laughs> hardly, that, that is not a legitimate issue at all. I've never seen it raised. The lead is a legitimate issue. Um, and again, if you're concerned about it, um, I have information uh, from the water, former commissioner uh, on how to make an assessment of your own water in your own thing. So if you want to do that, contact me later and I'll give you the documentation. Thank you. 
All right. So next we'll go with Brian Dennehy. If anybody else wants to ask a question, please raise your hand in the video, raise your hand in Zoom uh, so I can add you to the queue. Go ahead, Brian. So, so first I want to say that, that I always vote for the Greens. You know, I'm not a Green, but water reclamation, I'll always vote for the Greens. doesn't matter to me. I mean, Democrat, Republican, no. <clears throat> Anybody but those guys. So, you know, my question is more, you know, I, you know, it's like the, the Green New Deal, Medicare for all. I mean, it's like, how much money do you people want from me, man? I mean, it's just like, come on with this stuff. Like the tax burden is already outrageous. The, the restrictions on people's rights are already outrageous. There's already tons and tons and millions of regulations. I mean, how much more money and how much more regulations do you think we need in order to, to do anything, you know, move the country forward? You know, I All mean, right. can you guys, can you, can you do these policies without taking my cash or my rights? That's my, that's my question. Can you do this without taking my cash or my rights? Thank you. All right. Do you think Thanks you have a question. right? Do you think you have a right to pollute? You alone have somehow rights disproportionate to, that exceed the rights of the community to have live in an eco village. Who are you? What, what are you Where talking you about, Charlie? This? Where did you get this status? What, what are you talking about? Charlie, uh, would like we'll to know answer, where he thought we'll we were raising money. Where, where, where did I he ask? say we were raising taxes? Well, yeah, the, no I mean, the, the Green New Deal, that, that's definitely going to no, help Medicare for not. all. That's, that's no, not going to cost me where, No. So, we we spend eight hundred and one billion dollars uh, in twenty twenty one just on on the defense fund. It was um, one third of the discretionary fund and fifty percent of the non discretionary fund. It was more than the next nine countries combined. Um, next to us, we were at eight we hundred one billion. China was at seventy seven billion on the same year. So there's a lot of money there that we can go ahead and uh, we the U.S. Uh, military is also the largest polluter as well. So for me, it, it's a two for one special. We can get peace. We can we, we're in 750 bases around the world. Um, I was just on a phone call uh, the other day and we're like Greece, Poland, Italy. Why are we there? You know, that that was the people's quite, you know, question, why are we there? You know, so it is uh, with Charles presentation, you know, with one of the slides was about about the, you know, oil and about uh, about the United States and, you know, how we protect it. So it's not just, oh, everything is going to be the same and we're going to increase it. No, we want a sensible uh, way to to you know, uh, fund these things, but we also want to take it from places too. So it's not just hey, we're going to raise raise it. So for Medicare for all, right now we're it's a, it's a four point three trillion dollars, but we're already paying sixty seven percent of that. So you got, and, and with the efficiencies and savings um, with the VA fund, it's three hundred billion dollars. The, the veterans would actually in rural and non populous places would get better health care uh, through a health care for all program rather than the VA program. So there's lots of ways we can shift around money and there's lots of other regulations uh, that we can do for people who at luxury items um, or people who make more money. So it's definitely um, we're for the working class, and so we're definitely not not in favor of raising taxes unless there's a real good reason for that, and there's no other place where it's reasonable to take that. Um, so that answers your first question, and I think for the second question, we believe in individual rights. We believe that we we want a lot. You know, we want to make sure that there's um, the rights of the people. So to me. The Green Party um, is the party for um, to hold the line on individual rights. So. Would the uh, uh, would the Green Party right. support I'd the like assault weapons ban? Uh, we'll uh, mm -hmm. we'll get to an, uh, we'll get to another question. Uh, did Ellen or uh, or uh, yeah. Miss Jackson want to respond? Yeah, 
I'd like to, this is Ellen. Um, yeah, that uh, to me, you know, Brian, the corporations need to be regulated. That will bring in the taxes. Like they don't pay any taxes, basically. This whole system has been, you know, the, like, you know, the, what is it? The, um, you know, Amazon, all of this, you know, corporations aren't paying taxes. Corporations ever since Citizens United are like, they say they're people and they're, but yet, Corporations need to be regulated. People have laws, but right now, because they've changed it, there's like total unregulation. And that's what the libertarians are. You know, you think you're against regulation. That's going to be good for, you know, the base of money in the system, but it, it's not, you know, they've taken their taxes. We were healthiest during the war uh, when, you know, corporate taxes were 90%, which is, you know, about as much as they need. Now you just got billionaires having half all the income and have lawyers that they, they can just, you know, get rid of the EPA, you know, put in an anti-EPA guy in charge of the EPA. So, it, you know, it's a big lie that this, that left-wing welfare programs or whatever, you know, Medicare for all or EPA, that they're going to cost money, more money than what the Republicans just giving all, you know, almost half the income to, to the arms dealers and, and, you know, and poisoning and bio warfare and this vaccine and then no law against it, you know, and both, you know, let's just play the people and kill them off. I mean, somebody's got to stand up for the collective values because they make it like we're just communist or socialist. And this, this has been a, going on, this anti-communist thing, you know, since Nixon. And it, it's really got to stop. So it's, it's about being left wing, not right wing. And it's not, and the money, that's, we need to be liberal, not neoliberal. Okay. Um, I don't see Miss Jackson on the call anymore, um, unless I am mistaken. Next question. Next question, we'll go with Jan, and then whoever, uh, anybody else has a question, please raise your hand or shoot a message in the chat. Uh, Jan, please go ahead with your question. Okay, just a second. I'm going to turn on this light. Where's she going? Oh, I'm just going to turn on the light, so. Yeah, my light, the light was out, and it's getting dark. Um, I wanted to ask... Um, about recycling, because um, I don't recycle. I do compost, but I don't recycle uh, because I live in a building with 30, 39 families and uh, people put, you know, people put unwashed cans. They put um, pizza boxes that have got pizza on them into the recycle bin and uh, that company that you showed the uh, you showed the um dumpsters for is it w waste what is it? wcs or something like that waste, waste management waste management wm waste management um this is uh, this was my understanding from about three years ago and i don't know if it's still true waste management um, owns the recycling business and the trash business. And it's much cheaper to throw things in the check trash than it is to run it through the recycling process. So if you get a bin with something in it that does not recycle, but is actually trash, the whole bin goes to the trash. It can be a recycling bin, but if it's got trash in it, the whole thing goes to the trash. What's the I, question? No, no, no. I wanted, I wanted, that's my question. Is that true? No, true? no, no, no. There's percentages. Tom Shepard and I, as a matter of fact, got a bus and we arranged a tour of recycling centers around Chicago. It is a complex process. There are many issues attendant to it. I will admit that. I also said we're not happy by any means with the recycling program in progress in the city uh, since its inception. Um, also, recycling will not stop global warming. 
Um, yes, there are many. I, I concur with you entirely. There's very little compliance uh, in some regards. But no, uh, goods are issued at 90, 90 percentage of, of, of cleanness, if you wish, uh, usability. Um, you're probably best if you have, as a matter of fact, when I used to hand out guidelines for recycling, because it isn't a, a simple issue and takes some understanding of what is acceptable and what is not. That's why I used to have them in hard copy. I still have a supply of them, several hundred of them, as to what is the, what you should and shouldn't do. You're entirely correct. Most people aren't aware of that. A lot of people I see them glazing are people putting these plastic bags in there and they don't want that to happen. It, it, it ruins, it stops the recycling machines from processing the materials. So please do not put your plastic bags that are still given out and available around the city in the recycling containers. You know, in my building, I put a plastic bag up uh, on the wall. And I said, you know, it, it was kind of snarky, but I said, this is a plastic bag. Do not put plastic bags in the recycle bin. Do any of the Green Party candidates or associates want to comment on Jan's question? And, and the people in my building completely ignored it and they still threw their plastic bags in the recycle, even though I had a plastic bag stuck to the wall and said, don't put these in the recycle. It's very, very hard to uh, discipline the, the recycle. Thanks, uh, Jan. We, we can save this for our rebuttals. Um, we can move on to the next question. Um, uh, Doug's got the next question, followed by Janice, followed by Bob Matter. Go ahead, Doug. Okay, uh, I wasn't paying attention to the entire um, talk, uh, so I noticed something about uh, ward committeemen uh, being part of the Green Party now. I wondered what that was all about. Does the Green Party have official ballot status? Um, would be an, um, a, a relevant question in regards to that. Uh, maybe uh, Charles knows if that's um, um, has something to do with that. Thanks, I, I honestly, we do not have right now official ballot status. You have to get a certain percentage of the voters. Uh, we had it for a certain period of time. Uh, we do not enjoy that. It doesn't mean we cannot have a structure of a political party, however. And I'm not an expert on ward committee men, Doug. I, uh, but my principal idea of a ward committee men is to advance the party, its policies, the platform as I outlined, and its candidates that they are offering. The primary responsibility. The other one, of course, is to address issues, whether they be ecological or otherwise, that arise within your community. So I will get, in, I can to put you in touch with an individual of the Green Party. One of the things about the Green Party, I should say, is they've got some really sharp people. After all these years, you know, all about the structure of politics and getting on the ballot. And I would put you in touch with that individual um, in that regard. And to follow up on that, we are established in the uh, Metropolitan Water District of Greater Chicago District, which covers most of Cook County, um, but not entirely, but most. Um, so that's why we um, have our, uh, we have outside Cook, we have um, the township, uh, uh, committee people inside inside Chicago, we have the ward committee uh, people. Um, but uh, the Chicago Election Board, when I look it up on the website, it doesn't say anything about that. And I know I, I sent a note um, to about that, but I haven't followed up on it. It's been quite a while. Um, and the IVI IPO, they didn't put in any of the Green Party um, 
uh, elected or appointed officials in their guidebook last year for their annual dinner. And I addressed it with them and I went to, I try to follow up with them a couple of times, to see if they can uh, put our elected and our, our appointed officials um, in their annual book. Um, so I'm not sure if they did or, or didn't. I know um, that event's coming up. So it's a lot of follow through to make sure that we get um you know our fair shake we have to uh you know we have appointed and elected people we can't be listed on we're, we're we're not not like we can't but we're not listed on these websites um the endorsements are hard because people just want to stick with the status quo they don't want to rock the boat um i'm sometimes get uh uh because we're the the greens and the new parties and independents we come on after the established parties so by that time the endorsements are, are usually closed and then it's hard to get them reopened um and, and go through the process and actually have all the candidates who are running be um and be uh heard by these um uh, endorsing um uh organizations and like the Sierra Club, I what ran in 2020 as a green uh, for the 85th position. I asked for a questionnaire, never got a questionnaire. Again, went back to them on 2022 earlier this year, asked for a questionnaire, didn't get a questionnaire. So it's really, really hard because I'm out in the canvassing and, and people say, oh, you're the Sierra Club, you know, like, oh, are you endorsed by the Sierra Club? Well, no, I'm not and I can't get a questionnaire from them. So it's hard for me to even get their endorsement when I can't even get a questionnaire. So I hope that you know it gets corrected. There were a few um, organizations in 2020 that kind of you know reopened it or corrected it, corrected it. So it, it is a, it's a it's an uphill climb in Illinois. Other states don't have as much trouble um, with it. They have um, lesser petition signature requirements for third parties and independents, um, not Illinois. Um, and one of the one of the stats that really kind of holds to me, it, it's really eye opening is a pre COVID uh, 2020 candidates guide for Congressional District one. It was like 400 ish for a Republican for a new party, it was 16,000. <laughs> 16,000, 32 times. So we were actually, I have two little ones, we were doing a model car and the ratio was 132. And I'm like, here's the car. This is what they, here's the model car. This is what an established party needs. The size of the car is what the, a new party would need in order to run in that district, just to run, just to get, have a, have a chance on the ballot. So it's not, not always uh, fun and games here at the Illinois Green Party when it comes to ballot time, because even though we know the mechanics of it, the paperwork, um, and I know we have lots of, you know, we have candidates come on here to, to speak as well. So, you know, we appreciate it, but it's not always fun and games here um, in regards to having our fair shake, making sure that we get on the website, you know, making sure we get in front of the endorsing organizations. And so it's a bit of a trouble, but to me, it's for democracy. And that's, you know, there's there's nothing else I'd rather do than fight for democracy. Did Ellen Corley want to comment? Hearing no Ellen Corley, uh, we'll go on with Janice and then Bob Matter, and then I will ask a question after Bob Matter. So go ahead, Janice. Uh, okay, it's not really a question. It's a comment that uh, Iana A question, up please. A question. About water. And question. I just... All right, I'll leave. All right, Bob Matter, uh, are you on the call? Your turn to ask a question, Bob Matter. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. I guess I my my question is wondering if is there no uh, is there no from the Green Party? Could you ask your question again, Bob? Oh, yeah. Is is there nobody running as a Green Party candidate for governor in Illinois? There's nobody who signed up to run for um, governor. Um, there's still a little bit of time for a write-in, so we are um, getting some, um, some endorsements in for write-ins, though, for 2022. Um, so, but nothing's come in for governor. I know people were interested, but um, nothing has formulated. Charles, did you want to comment on that? No, I'm fine. We, we've got a pretty eco-friendly uh, liberal uh, governor, so I personally have no issues regarding the incumbent. In the Green Party, yeah. That just, we don't run candidates for the sake of running candidates. Um, it's not, doesn't mean that we've been We've defend endorsed. our values, Charlie. You know, I mean, it doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we have endorsed any particular candidate, but we, uh, given, I think, given the onerous task of putting a candidate, I think governor something like twenty six thousand signatures. If I could stand, I could stand being corrected. All right. So is, is a deadline? Is there is there a deadline to? To get Bob, on the ballot. Is that been, I'm is, gonna, we'll get you in the next round. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask my question, which is, uh, so decentralization is a big part of your platform, um, including you guys would, uh, you know, self-determination uh, for Puerto Rico. Would you guys also support, say, uh, Texas? deciding it wants to secede from the United States or would you support say like the southern portion of Illinois splitting off and becoming its own state within the United States do you guys take decentralization that radically we do not as far as my work have ever discussed this issue as you frame it I realize you're head of this effort to separate Chicago from the state of Illinois. I've attended your meetings. Uh, I believe you spoke at the college on it, but I'm not personally aware of it having been addressed in any that to establish separate and totally separate political entities or to have some sort of uh, state removal from the United States, I'm not aware of any discussion regarding that. I'm not certain, that is your own effort, I, I realize. Um, I find it somewhat problematic. Uh, there's always been a tenuous relationship between the urban and rural areas that constitute states. And I don't believe, I think we can come up with solutions that are beneficial to everyone concerned. Um, Anna, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, I, I don't think that these, uh, I was looking, just looking back at some kind of things. I don't think they've ever been presented to be discussed um, at the Illinois Green Party level. I could be wrong about that historically. Um, I know we do focus a lot about the um, environment, um, uh, rights, and um, health care. So I know that, especially with the environment, you know, it's a very pressing issue for us because it may be a limited time that we have clean water and clean air um, or the opportunity to have clean water and clean air. So, you know, water and air are very important to our survival. Um, so I, we've been, uh, you know, focusing a lot about that. But if these issues do you know, get on the agenda, we can um, go ahead and discuss that. Ryan, I, I, or uh, Justin, I'd like to add, from our, my perspective, a more, why are you just dividing up an organization? It, if you're reorganizing, you could reorganize it in any fashion you like. Now, I always thought it, make, it makes absolutely more sense 
to establish the United States as different bioregions. Uh, that would be a much more uh, beneficial approach uh, to addressing issues of people that share a common environment of certain, like here, such as we are Great Lakes uh, 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 urban metropolitan uh, area. We also incorporate um, uh, agriculture, the most significant agriculture in the nation. Um, the bioregion concept, I think, makes infinitely more sense if you're going to reorganize things, you're just splitting it half, and I don't see what that in, by in and of itself doesn't mean it's better necessarily. There's no linear causality by that. Um, that's what I mean. It's it's a symbiotic relationship between the urban and rural. Um, it's always been the case, but I would put up. Uh, there's studies and books on this that. Um, something like there's five bioregions, uh, five to ten bioregions, depending on how you you do it. Uh, river basin drainage. Uh, you see that in particular in the East Coast. Uh, they define them as in the Potomac uh, Basin and things like that. That makes infinitely more sense uh, that there are common concerns. That is genuine con common concerns. Okay, does that answer it? It's a good answer. It doesn't quite answer my question, Charlie, but uh, I appreciate it. You, you just think, no. I'll move you, on, though. You, you just want to, is this some notion that uh, local government is infinitely always in, at all? To, that's just because you're anti government. And so you like to define big government as bad. Well, Charlie, I've never actually bad. said that. That's not what I think. That's what um, you but you think. guys are the ones with the decentralization as part Big of your government is bad. You guys have right. decentralization as part of your agenda. So I, I, you know, I think it's a legitimate question to ask. Uh, yeah, and I know. So you're, we'll you're start with the next round of questions. Big government is bad government. Small government is good government, right? No, all government that tramples on people's rights, uh, all governments need to be restrained. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, yes, Justin, if you uh, want. Let me go on with the uh, program here. All governments tap. Charlie, tap Charlie, for. Charlie, let's move on with the program. So it's I know Missy, Brian's got a question. I know Jan had another question and Bob had another question. So if uh, is Jan still on the call? Well, we'll go. We'll go. Brian, Jan, Bob. Um, and if anybody else wants to hop back in and ask. A question, please raise your hand or send a message. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you. So I, more of a question for Anna, because I know where Charlie stands on these issues. <laughs> um, so what uh, the the assault, would the Green Party support the assault weapons ban, red flag laws, and um, <clears throat> uh, I had another one, but could you, could you speak on those two? Um, in regards to, um, there was a gun issue brought up in our agenda, and so we have a coordinating committee, and that's what drives the Green Party, so it is, um, you know, up to coordinating committee to decide upon these issues, and it was mentioned, um, I remember one time at a coordinating committee meeting about the gun laws, um, and we support um, uh, individual rights, and um, so to me, like as candidate, I get to decide what I what I choose for myself. So that is to me, you know, something that, you know, is an individual perspective. And I like the fact that they hold the line and make sure that it's still an individual right. Is that a yes or, or I mean, it's the, the assault weapons ban, you know, it's the, the red flag laws. Yeah, I haven't, and it has not, those have not been specifically brought up in the coordinating committee. So there is no, no answer because there is, there is not, the party didn't discuss that issue particularly. Well, how about you as a candidate? For me as a candidate and as a mom in elementary school, 
I do support the Second Amendment. It is second, you know, it is there. It is very important as a historic, as a, somebody who studied history, I understand the historical significance of it as well. Um, but me as a mom in elementary, with two elementary school kids, it is a concern of mine. So there's a lot we can do with seller and um, dealer uh, ma manufacturer regulations that doesn't go anywhere near uh, the ownership uh, issue at all. Um, and actually, I like the 1968 legislation that was actually repealed, um, the 1986 uh homeowners le legislation. Uh, so there's two points in the 1968 legislation that I like is one is the gun dealers, you have to if you sell more than four guns, um, you have to register as a gun dealer Four is a little low but eight to 10, you know, I think is is would, would suffice. Um, and then also the ban on uh, uh, selling guns um, at gun shows and actually I would just prefer all gun purchases to be at the principal place of business. Um, and also I would like to make sure that um, anybody who is manufacturing a gun um, can apply um, and go through um, a process to be a gun manufacturer. So people can't just, you know, buy um, a machine um, to make ghost guns like they, that that to me is um you know not not um the best use of our resources um i think that you know these things are weapons and um in regards to seller and manufacturer and dealer reg re regulations there's a lot we can do there uh and, and it doesn't affect the normal gun owner so what about uh, the uh, red Brian, we can, uh, get a, we'll move on to the next question um okay uh bob matter you had another question i believe okay i guess i uh answered it uh but in the in the break here i looked at uh i looked up on the uh ballotpedia to see when the deadline was to uh to get on the ballot and yeah, it, it has passed for governor. It was July 11th. However, write-in candidates uh, can get in, but you have to file a form 61 days before the election. And that's only uh, that's so that's only 19 days left. So, any of you that want to be thanks, Bob. Uh, write in. Uh, we will uh, go with Doug Bingley. Get on. And then Brian, you can ask, uh, you can go back on with another question. Um, and then maybe it'd be time for rebuttals after that. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead, Doug. Let's go ahead, Brian, and we'll move on to rebuttals. Okay, uh, in looking at the uh, policy, list of policies, um, um, I didn't see, uh, I, I should explain, I actually was with the Citizens Party in the 80s. Um, quite prominent in it actually. Um, and um, that was the pre a precursor to the Green Party. Most people, including me, um, call it that. Um, and we had a policy of wanting to nationalize the oil companies. I didn't see anything about that in um, the Green Party's uh, policies today. Is there any consideration of that, especially with the recent price gouging? The, the basis of the Green New Deal is to nationalize the energy production. Oh, I, is it? I, yeah. And by the way, the Green Party started in like 1978. So I think we were a little bit ahead of you. Well, I, um, I don't know if there was an official Green Party, but the Citizens Party had almost the all Greens the- Greens were getting together. Positions, uh, well, we were more organized then because we were I, running- I dispute that, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe- well, you I want to where you disappeared. So you often I mean I don't recall any actual Green Party in those days. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because you're busy with your party. <laughs> well, perhaps so, but uh, it seems like there it would have, it would have been time for a merger since each were, each was so they, small. They, they, all right, they, all right, all right. Uh, the green we'll movement the began Doug. The Green Movement began after the um, first Earth Day in 1970. And all ecology stuff 
all environmental stuff is political. And I gave you a site example that I ran Earth Day in the federal center, which is supposed to be nonpartisan. But they said, I said, how could I apply this when every single ecological issue is in essence political? All right, Brian, you got the last question. You know, we, we can just go to rebuttals if you want. All right, I mean, I'll be I'll be the first to do a rebuttal if that's if that's all right. All right, sure. We'll start with Brian. Who else wants? If anybody else wants to do a rebuttal, please raise your hand. Uh, and let, for yes, let's thank our speakers: the Green Party, Charlie, Anna. Uh, um, I uh, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. I, I forgot her first name. Um, um, and Danielle. Anna Corley, and there was another gentleman. I think he's no longer on. But thanks, right. Green Party guys and gals. Um, so let's go. Uh, so first off, Brian, you go ahead, do a rebuttal and we'll go how many minutes? We'll do five minutes. Five minutes sounds good to me. Um, and, uh, Brian, when you're ready to go, I'll get five minutes. Then we'll go to Doug Binkley after Brian. Yep. Hey, thanks for uh, for your presentation. I, you know, as as I said, I, I do vote for Greens. I mean, it's I, I just it, Democrats, Republicans, no way. I, I I'm not interested whatsoever. Um, so you know, but Greens, I, they concern me a little bit with their, you know, just kind of the big government. You know, um, so I know decentralization, like you talk about it, but you know, Medicare for all, Green New Deal, that's not decentralization. That is that's the centralization of power. That is a direct, um, you know, distribution or redistribution of cash from individuals, working class individuals to, to large companies, to private equity firms. So, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, the, the policies, like they sound okay, but I think in reality as implemented, those policies would be, um, <clears throat> you know, result in the consolidation of power and the redistribution of wealth from the poor to the, to the very wealthy. Um, it, you know, on, on another note, I think, you know, with the, you know, we've as liber as libertarian party, we have the same issues with getting on the ballot, uh, the shenanigans, you know, we are still like, we're established in Cook County, but if you look at the, the candidate guide, the only time you'll see libertarian mentioned is in a, is in a citation to a court case like we're not listed you know it, it you know it's not democrat republican and then it's like independent we're not even in there and so you know it just shows you you know that the the two parties just go out of their way to to make sure they're the only people that can talk and the only people that are listened to and, and it's pretty appalling so you know they are those two parties are they are the antithesis of democracy. They are, um, <clears throat> you know, they don't work on behalf of the people. And so, you know, to the extent that Greens run and the Libertarians not in the race, I'll vote for Green. Doesn't matter to me. The, you know, get somebody else in there to talk other than those two guys that are just ripping us off. Um, so, you know, but I, it's a, you know, I, I guess I would just prefer that if you're going to you know, ha you know, support these kind of, you know, big policies to, to outline where are you going to get that money? And, you know, when, you know, so even in your platform, you talk about the Federal Reserve and the issuance of the currency and how the banks do it and how the government like deficit spending results in interest being paid to the Federal Reserve and redistributed to private banks, to their shareholders, you know, so deficit spending, that's the Green New Deal. That's Medicare for all. That's a redistribution of wealth, you know, through this, you know, deficit spending and redistribution. So, um, you know, I, I guess I, I would just hope that you guys would try to kind of tighten that up a little bit and kind of talk about where you're going to get the money to, to pay for all this stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thanks, Brian, and, uh, and for that. And then I do want to talk about um, uh, the centralization part, too. Um, and 
there's a recent podcast we, we have. That, uh, we can get to your D, uh, during the rebu final rebuttal. Uh, we'll get through everybody's rebuttal, and then Perfect. we'll get back to the. And I am interested. It sounds good. I, I like the decentralization aspect. Um, uh, so thank you, Brian, for your rebuttal. Doug, we'll go. Doug Binkley. Does anybody else want to give a rebuttal after Doug Binkley? You can raise your hand. I'll go after Doug Binkley. Um, go ahead, Doug. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, I worked with the Citizens Party as a volunteer um, in the early 80s. I uh, wandered into the office and just uh, kind of stayed there um, in 1980. Barry Commoner was the, uh, was the uh, national candidate for president. Uh, at some point, um, we started to not totally emphasize the presidential race. We were trying for ballot status. Uh, a guy named John Anderson sneaked in as a third party candidate or actually an independent, I think. Um, and he, he kind of stole a bunch of our thunder. Um, at that time, 5% was the limit to getting um, ballot status where you didn't have to um, have petitions signed all the time to, um, uh, to be automatically on the ballot. I don't know exactly what the rules are now, but um, at that time, we, uh, we, we didn't make it obviously in the presidential race in 1980. And uh, of course that was the, the year that Carter got clobbered. A lot of us felt bad, I certainly felt bad. Um, about that situation, um, but um, we did continue on um, in 1982. Um, we had a candidate. We concentrated on a state representative district. Um, it was on the north side, uh, Lakeview area. There was a guy who was a businessman who was with. Um, uh, he had a record company. I think it was called Flying Fish Records. I'm not sure. It's, I'm just going by memory at this point, but um, we did actually get the five percent. I worked on that campaign. Um, and um, um, the interesting thing about that was is that they required by law that you're supposed to run somebody for a ward committeeman in each of the wards of which there was a section in that um, um, state legislature district. District uh, it maybe didn't qualify that earlier. The state legislature, and um, and uh, so I was picked. I, I was the only one in one of the one of the wards, and so I ran for a ward committeeman. So that's why I asked the question about that. I thought it was rather interesting because. Uh, that's the only time I ran for office and I was elected, so I'm one for one. Uh, there were five votes cast for me in my precinct. Three of them were my family, and I don't know who the hell the other two were because I didn't really canvass the, uh, the section uh, of, the, of the, um, uh, the district that um, was, was part of my ward. Um, but uh, that's a sidelight, an interesting sidelight. Uh, uh, it's something I don't mention frequently at the college. A few times I've mentioned that I had a history in the Citizens Party. It was a, there were some rather prominent people, uh, Clinton Young, who later became a personal friend of mine and my own physician, um, uh, with the um, uh, uh, Physicians for Social Responsibility, or it sounds something like that, uh, and Doctors Without Borders. That, uh, uh, and he um, um, was the head of the party. Um, for about five years, I was the second in command, as it were, because as, as the party uh, didn't have that many people who wanted to run for um, uh, an administrative post. Uh, uh, so I technically, I was the second in command under, under Clinton Young. But um, uh, Stud Circle was a prominent member. Um, and they sometimes would call the office. And I had a few conversations with him, but um, only you know, because I was a nobody, <laughs> just didn't get anywhere with him. But um, at any rate, um, the interesting thing is that we did propose at that time, and this was, of course, in 1980, um, the um, uh, the nationalization of the oil companies as part of, um, you know, being that they were predatory and everything. And, uh, and uh, so, um, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested to, here. I didn't really realize that in the Green New Deal, which is um, espoused by um, uh, AOC and others, um, that that is um, part of the plan to nationalize those companies. Um, they certainly have been guilty of price gouging lately and making a massive profits. Although they'll they'll tell you, of course, they have all sorts of technical reasons why they uh, find it hard to, um, um, you know. Um, put more oil production in place where you really need it in, in um, a quote wartime voting, they, they won't actually jump to the national um, needs, uh, but, uh, but they'll be happy to make um, money on the um, ad, added price that uh, comes about through the uh, dislocation of the, 
of the oil um, uh, economy uh, due to Putin's uh, invasion. Uh, anyhow, um, I guess I've probably done my five minutes, so I'll um, just on those historical notes. Oh, by the way, uh, nobody from uh, any Green Party came by the office, and I was running the office for five years, and I had the keys. <laughs> so uh, if there was a Green Party at that time, they, they weren't uh, interested in joining up with the Citizens Party, which had all the, the Green Party type of policies. Uh, um, and I, I would know it. Uh, I was there. Okay, I'll let you go. Um, and back uh, to the next person. Thanks. Exactly five minutes. Oh, wow. Uh, all right. Anybody, I, I said I would go, but anybody else want to go can definitely go ahead of me if they want to speak. Bob, Margaret, anybody? All right, I'll go ahead and go. Okay. Um, so I wasn't here last week, and I want to say good job, Brian, on your uh, presentation last week. I, I was in Missouri. It was my sister's birthday, but uh, I totally would have joined uh, the presentation if I could. Um, good job. And uh, Doug Binkley kind of threw a below the belt at you, I felt. He kind of tried to tie you in with the January 6th stuff. And I, if I was uh, – I do. I, I thought that was not accurate and below the belt, but I do think Doug. I didn't Beep, mention January six. What are you talking uh, about? You're I think he one foot at a time. One foot at a time, sir. Uh, but I do want to thank Doug Binkley for his uh, little history lesson on the Citizens Party. Uh, did not know anything about that. Interesting to know. Uh, John Anderson stole some Libertarian Party thunder in 1980 as well. Um. Uh, so, it's, yeah, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, I support the Green Party candidates for Ma Water Reclamation Board. Um, I always have. I'm going to vote for you guys again. Uh, so uh, keep up the good work there. I'm glad you guys are able to keep that going and that be a, a thing. And congratulations on that. Um, I, I do know how ballot access sucks and I do feel your pain. And if I could give you guys, if I could wave a wand and give you guys ballot access across Illinois, I certainly would. But uh, I do, I'm going to gloat just a little bit because thank you, Brian. Libertarians are established in Cook County. And I just want to say, uh, um, we participated in our first ever lottery to determine how we're going to get on the ballot. And, and I got an invitation in the mail. Uh, some of our candidates showed up. We was at the county clerk's office and Democrats got pulled first. Republicans got pulled second. Libertarians got pulled third. Um, I... It, it was insane. Uh, Nico, our Nico Satsoulis, who you can please vote for in November for county assessor, he took to Twitter and he said that the chances of that happening were 16.67%. Uh, and he, this is what he said on Twitter. God, even God and even God is a Democrat in Cook County. So uh, it was just insane. So Unfortunately, Demo uh, the Libertarians will be the third behind Democrats and Republicans in Cook County races. However, there's going to be several two-way races between Democrats and Republicans in Cook County. Uh, so um, that includes Jim Humay's district. That includes uh, – he's in the first district for the commissioner. Uh, that includes Jason Decker's district for in the fifth district. That includes Nico Satsoulis, who is running for, uh, like I said, assessor. So statistically, the Libertarian Party is on track to its extending ballot access uh, for another few years. Um, and I, 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 if I could, I would definitely bestow some of that upon the Green Party because they deserve to have a slot in these races as well. Um, 
And as far as decentralization goes, it's an interesting topic. I'm glad the Green Party, uh, you know, talks about it. Uh, decentralization and local control is a big reason why I'm a libertarian. And um, I certainly want to continue this conversation with the Greens about decentralization. So thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Ellen. And thanks to everybody else. Um, uh, for your presentation today. Now that's me. Does anybody else wish to rebut uh, today? I have a re-rebuttal. Uh, maybe we can save that one until we uh, until the program is officially over. But anybody else who hasn't given a rebuttal want to give a rebuttal? Bob, uh, anyone, Margaret, anyone? Well, considering no other people uh, seem to want to be going up for a funnel, I will now go ahead and give uh, the spotlight back to our speakers. Again, thank you, Green Party, for your presentations this evening. Um, go ahead with your final rebuttals. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, uh, oh, Charles, do you want to go first? That's oh, right. no, you, I was going to say, you go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up with the decentralization and centralization items. Um, I'm going to put a link um, to our YouTube channel here. We run weekly podcasts every Monday. Uh, and one of them recently was talking about um centralization of energy and um how we want to make public utilities um actually be public utilities and not privately owned via eminent domain um and make sure that it gets to the labor and it's a very pro-labor pro-working rights um uh issue um for the public utilities um but it was something that was interesting that um uh uh, on one of the podcasts, it was with um, our secretary, um, uh, Chris Blankenhorn, where we would love decentralization of energy. Uh, and that would have been great if that if this was 1986, but we're not in 1986 anymore. We're in 2022, and we don't have the time or the luxury to decentralize energy. Um, and so that's why you'll see some of these centralization items out there in regards to um, in, in the Green New Deal. It, it's because of time, the essence. Time is of the essence. Where we are talking about not just the butterflies or the bees or the polar bears. Um, so those are all important, but we're also talking uh, about humans. You know, our everybody's air um, is, is, might be at stake. Everybody's water might be at stake. And so we don't have the time, we don't have the luxury of time to decentralize energy right now. Um, so that is why you'll see the centralization um, of, of these items out there. So I just wanted to clarify that, but you know, put that out there, why you're seeing it now, um, you know, it, 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 and the reasonings behind that. Um, is, is because we don't have the time to decentralize energy right now. And it is very critical that, that we take control of that and make sure that we have water as a right, air as a right. Um, so it's not just healthcare as a right, you know, to me, making sure that my children, my very young children, that they're going to have grandbabies that I don't have to buy them oxygen masks for their, or oxygen tanks for their birthdays. Um, which is something that when it comes, it's going to be too little, too late. Are you done, Anna? Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Over. All right. Good job. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Justin, should I go ahead? Charlie, what was that? Sorry. Should I go ahead, sir? Oh, yeah, go ahead with your final rebuttal, Steve. All right, first of all, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. 
and for learning more about our Green Party uh, uh, at State Notional International. I hope you uh, have a favorable response to what was presented and what we are trying to do. Um, I also in particular want to thank Justin for coming out on real, real short notice and helping us bring about in an excellent professional fashion this evening's presentation. Thank you again, sir, very much. Awesome. Um, if uh, I just want to say you, the measure of the success of the program will be if you become a member of the Illinois Green Party at some level, at minimum, I would recommend uh, following, uh, subscribing uh, the website of the ILGP uh, and the Chicago Greens. Uh, I believe we do a good job of putting up uh, relevant, important issues uh, of the day that everyone should be aware of. Now, regarding my friend Brian, uh, Brian, the beginning in the early 70s, there developed in the economy of the United States something which we call the multinational corporation, um, which in order to counter it, you have to have significant resources. Um, the, so there's some talk here about leveling the playing field. Well, there's no playing field at all. Uh, so in terms of the local activity, uh, now there's another concept you're not aware of. It's called the economy of function. Um, I eludes me what is the benefit of localized healthcare programs when we need a national healthcare policy, it loses me that it would even be different. Um, but for organizational purposes, given the, today's communication uh, possibilities, any arguments for minimalization don't quite make any sense when the means of administration, I work for an agency and I perform services for every other agency of the government uh, so that they didn't have to have somebody doing my job. It actually was more efficient. I did printing for the for all of the agencies so that they didn't have a, a, a print shop in each agency for someone who knew graphic arts in each agency. So it was an economy of function. So that's what I mean. It doesn't illogical that smaller somehow is better. Now, what they mean by localized is that sometimes they say you could buy locally grown produce, um, which is uh, nutritional, nutritionally grown without pesticides, nitrous oxides as well, versus you can, you can buy food grown by agribusiness. Uh, that's your choice. Um, uh, but, uh, that's what I mean. The, um, uh, now regarding oil, anybody has, has to be a nice relative isolation, not to know that, uh, Mobile Exxon and others, these oil companies are, uh, are, are naming the tune that the government is supposed to dance to. The government is the only counter that we have to these entities. Now, the real cost of gasoline, I've heard, uh, $16 a gallon. Um, uh, so that's what I mean. And to say that we haven't engaged in wars for oil, that's what I mean. I still remember the signs that said, no war for oil. So you talk about, you're concerned about expenditures. Wars are very expensive uh, to conduct. Um, anyhow, that's basically it. I think, um, I hope you got some idea of, of, of I mean, 
to have administering an ecological policy requires almost a, a nationwide effort. Um, the, I'm always brought to mind, I spoke about this earlier one time on the problem of uh, the gases, the, the rain, um, the, the toxic rain that was being produced by the steel mills in Illinois and floating and destroying the forest, the acid rain was produced in the in the factories of the Midwest and drifting over the uh, flora and fauna and killing it on the East Coast. So the only way that would not happen had there been a nationwide policy regarding uh, CO2s and the gases that produce this acid rain. Anyhow, that's it. I hope everyone enjoyed it. And uh, I also yeah, want to thank thanks, guys. the other Green Party 